Hello. Hello. Right, so we have just arrived in Framlingham, um, fictional Danebury in Detectorists. Um, apologies for everybody on the Camper Van channel. If you're not interested in Detectorists, don't watch. It's my favourite TV show. I've got to host the video somewhere. If you're here for Detectorists only, apologies for the voice. I'm losing my voice. I've, I've had a cold and a cough for the last few days. Um, so we're going to take a tour around Framlingham, show you some of the things that we use as Danebury. Then we're off to Orford to film Becky's school. And then we're going to try and find the lunch tree and a few little places on the way. Hopefully I'll cobble something together and it'll be vaguely entertaining. <laughs> I'll see you later. Right, to give you a bit of perspective, that's my van there. That's obviously Maggie's shop. And then the bookshop next to it's had a new frontage. Uh, it's amazing how you sort of think it looks bigger in the show. It was really tiny square. And if we spin straight round, see Heather there. As soon as we're looking up here, you can see in the distance Mr. Chan's and Double Street. But where Heather is now already, that is actually what would be the lemon tree. It's obviously been renamed now. And then straight opposite is Andy's tree where he hides from Lance. And the road is so narrow, you just don't realize. Um, so yeah, this Watson and Warpole used to be the lemon tree. And then there's the table in the corner that uh, Lance and Kate sat at. But it's just such a tiny distance across a little single road to uh, Andy's tree. And then down there is the road that Sophie and Peter walked down. But we're just gonna do a little walk along this road and then we'll um, do a little silly reenactment of the tree as you've gotta do. It's just amazing how close together everything is. I mean, I can already see the scout hut from here, um, right opposite Mr. Chan's. You can see it in the distance there. Uh, it's quite strange. And then, obviously, as we are here, there's the um, the grate that Tony and Lance stand on with the hurl over deck tablets. Yes, we do. And all that I can see up in the distance is the uh, the two brewers or the castle. So down this street, this is Double Street. You can actually see the corner of Lance's house from here. It's all right, we got interrupted by a guy telling us of how to get to places, but we printed a map off. So as I say, this is Mr. Chan's on the corner. And there's the famous grate that Lance and Tony with an eye stood on. It's actually Double Street, which is where Lance's flat is down there. Um, like I said, I keep going over how close things are together. Um, what we'll do, I'll walk up to the two brewers, which is the castle, and then we'll do this all backwards, and then we'll go down Lance's Street. It's really small. Oh, it's all right, Heather's just saying to me, it's a hell of a lot smaller than it looks on the telly. It's really weird. You expect it just, you expect it to be different. I mean, there's the scout hall. I don't know why, I guess the camera lenses they use and the angles they use, but it's really weird. Like the two brewers is next to the scout hall. So there is the DMDC headquarters. It looks right run down. Um, and then pan straight across, there's the brewers. Weird, I don't know. You just don't know it's on the telly, do you? Obviously go and have a look round all these in a bit. Just sort of getting it out of my system first. And again, apologies for my voice. I was gonna let Heather do all the talking, but I'm too excited. All right, so this is the castle. Obviously the exterior only of the two brewers. Um, and I suppose it's called the castle because there's Framlingham Castle up there, which isn't famous in my eyes. I'm not really interested in that. Sorry, National Heritage. We're here for one thing only. And uh, it'd be this. Uh, 
There we go. There is the two brewers at exterior. Right, leaving the castle in, two brewers, right next door. I wonder if that's that. So that's where they walk out of the gate, isn't it? Look. What gate? When they come out the gate and then railings and they walk off up there. Oh, yes, of course. It is. Oh, we just noticed another part we didn't know. Well, we did, but... <laughs> so, one of the sections where Lance and Andy walk out, here like that, is right next to the brewers. I only recognise it myself because of this railing. And obviously they go off up there. Yeah. I'll double check all these when I watch them again just to make sure, but certainly recognize that railing there as Andy and Lance are walking here. So if we go scout hot brewers round here, this is Church Street. We're just gonna see if it actually meets up with um, Double Street, which is, um, it's all one way. So we'll see what happens. And then if this is messy, I'll tidy it up in the edit. Yeah, so we were right. Double Street being a one way, it's gonna be walking up this. And we'll see Lance's flat. Okay. So approaching from this way, there's Lance's flat. Um, obviously someone's in, I've got to be careful. I'm, I'm not that nosy, but it's just that I suppose they're used to it, to be honest. Film it from the other side. Yeah, they're, they're so fed up with people doing this, I guess. But there we go. No sign of TR7. <laughs> huh. Yeah, Lance has updated to a Subaru. <laughs> so if we come back out this way, you'll see Mr. Chan's on the corner this side now. It is a one-way street, but only for the very top end here. Lovely little village, though. Oh, they don't agree with me. Yes, we do. <laughs> Feels weird, like I've watched this show like 50 odd times. I'm gushing like a fanboy. <laughs> One more quick run up to Lance's flat, like. And there, look. That's how close it is. Really weird. The DMDC. Keep hopping on, but the perspective is amazing how it looks on the telly compared to real life where, where everything is. Uh, the building's really run down. I did hear that they were going to knock it down. I'm not surprised, to be honest. Um, it's a really run down building. I don't know if I can see inside anyway. Oh, it's pitch black in there, so I don't know if it's that section. It's obviously, ah, here we go. The problem is you've got a reflection um, of everything. I can actually see inside. Just wondering if I can get the angles. Can you see? Might get around the other side. Where I'm looking now, by that table that you can just about see, I hope, Sheila's hatch is there. Um, I'll try and take the phone off the gimbal and see if it helps. Try around the other side as well. Obviously, I can see perfectly. It's just there's a reflection off the glass. So you've got the table there, and as I pan out now, it starts to reflect on the cars in the car park, unfortunately. Right, so if we look from the back end, this door you wouldn't see in the show, but that is sort of, if you was behind Sheila's hatch, this is the perspective of where we are, this back corner. 
I'm just gonna see if I can sneak round this way. Uh, don't wanna get in trouble. Now it's all blacked off. See, this is the side. If I could get there, I could see through them windows a lot easier and get you an angle. Um, there's no point in trying to go in the churchyard because I won't get close enough. So unfortunately, on the left-hand side, there's a keep out sign there. If I could actually go through there, I could see through the windows better. But you can't get through. I shouldn't be doing this, but I'm never gonna come here again, am I? There's the main doors where the guy comes in and Peter walks in and stuff like that. The guy that's brought all the fleeces for Lance. That's about as best as I can get. Um, anyway, I'll have to do. So I'm gonna walk around here. This is the side of the road where Andy's walking. He's on the phone to Bex and she's just stormed out of the school meeting. But Andy gets distracted and says he'll call her back later. He sees Lance where Heather is there, over there. And then here's the entrance to the tree. Try and give you the, uh, the tree's really overgrown to be honest. I, well, yeah, but there's loads of trees, there's loads of twigs. So I'm just sort of get, getting a perspective. Yeah, probably. Can you get me some masonry nails? <laughs> Galvanised. Galvanised, yeah. <laughs> Have they got a mariachi band playing? <laughs> oh yeah, they're having a Mexican evening. Gotta go. They're bringing out the pinata. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh uh, it's hard work this is, not. <laughs> so we're pretending to be Peter and Sophie now. Can't walking what down they're there. About when they're walking um, down no, normally. <laughs> but these are the windows where there's like a helmet in, in one of the windows you can see. So they're walking really slow because it's like literally 20 foot long and that's it. So you can tell now why they're walking really slow on the, uh, on the show. And that's it, there's the post. So as we've come out of the alleyway <clears throat> that Sophie and Peter are walking down, you're going down this hill. The, um, the metal detector shop is on my left now as we go down here. Doesn't look like there's a Power Rangers detector in the window, unfortunately. There we go. And film the window, but there's no metal detectors in there. <laughs> right, so walking back up the hill now from the electrical shop, um, we'll go the opposite way where Sophie and Peter walk, just to give you some perspective. This is the uh, opposite way up that road that uh, Sophie and Peter walk up. You don't walk see down. any walk down, yeah, sorry. They're walking the bit that we just reenacted badly. That's the house that they walk past. Um, just to give you an idea on how short the actual path is, you see. These are the posts. So you can see now why they walk so slowly in the show. And it's obviously right next to what was the lemon tree. Um, and obviously the shot cuts away before you also realize that it was Andy's tree and the lemon tree pub, sorry, restaurant. So we're in basically, the basically. Yeah. The the shot 
is the cameraman looking up that way. Up that way as they're walking down from about halfway. Right, so they're walking down this path like this. Apparently, shows how much attention I've paid. I've only watched it 50 times. <laughs> huh. But I think what you do see is from the camera angle, you can see these posts. You see the posts. So if we walk through and then just split apart there, you think we see something like that. Here's a Yeah. Right. So this is the main square as you walk in where we parked. There's the Framlingham sign. We'll do Maggie's shop now and then we'll go to the co-op for some freesias, Fahrenheit and Frero Rocher. Are you going in? Obviously it's look, it looks bigger from this side. But it's actually filmed from the other side. I wonder if they've got any green sky otters. So the bulk shop next to it had a really faded green cover on it. It's all been painted up now. We're guessing that the co-op that they used is through here, but obviously we don't know. So just round the corner from Maggie's shop is a little entrance into the co-op. Obviously I can't go in there because of the dog and only Heather's gone in there to get some stuff. Hopefully she's took a few little still photos. We're guessing this is the co-op they used in the show. Okie dokie, so we are driving through the main part of Framlingham now. On the right is what used to be the lemon tree. On the left is Andy's tree. <laughs> On the right, Mr. Chan's into Double Street where Lance's flat is. And then just on the left hand side past this church is the Scour Hut. And then right next to it is the two brewers. And obviously Framlingham Castle is up there, but we're not interested in that. Okay, it's a one-way street. We have no idea where we're going at the minute. Does, what does Sat Nav say? If I turned right here, this is Double Street and I'd come out by Lance's flat, but obviously I'm not gonna do that. Right. I don't know which order I'm filming this and sticking it in, but this is going to be the metal detecting shop on your left hand side that Andy got the Power Rangers detector from. Just coming up to it now, on your left. And that really concludes the drive through part, doesn't it? Heather's making some mums nervous now. <laughs> it's been repainted since. But there it is. Just go to the entrance and play Catch the Greasy Pig. Oh. This is where Becky and Andy stand. And she's in Dickensian themed costume. And she's gonna go and play Catch the Greasy Pig. 
And Andy says, isn't that cruel? Just checking my messages. And there's the trees opposite the school. And there's my van. This is the part where Andy walks off now from the tree. And um, Becky says, more like a drug dealer than paedophile. Right, we're going to actually stop and have a spot at lunch. Um, just move the van forward. That's the tree that Andy leans up against. Um, and then there's the entrance to the school. That would be where Becky parks a car. And um, Andy asks her if she wants to come to the scout hut because Terry's doing a talk on buttons. And she goes, buttons? Something, something. And then looks round. <laughs> Gonna have some lunch now. What you don't see is there's a main road right behind you. It's the way we came in. Framlingham was up that way. And then we pulled straight into the school here. Right, just leaving Becky's school now. Um, just had our lunch outside. We appreciate there is another pub in Orford where they filmed the internal scenes for the uh, pub quiz. But obviously lockdown is still on until tomorrow. It's the 16th of um, May at the minute. You can't go in a pub till tomorrow, so we can't be bothered to go there just to see the outside of a building that you didn't actually see the outside of in the show. So we're now gonna go and find the tree, if we can get there. Yes. Right, so this is the actual road that they filmed the... Um, Some. Some of the TR7 and the little scooter chase down, the slow car chase. We're not exactly sure of which locations, obviously. But it's definitely this road where um, it was like Hill Street Blues or Chips or something. But well, we don't know exactly where. Which is this is the road down to uh, where the tree is located. So there was plenty of stuff filmed down here. Yeah, quite a few of the things that they find. And yeah, the find finding things and stuff. You're turning left. Uh-huh. Hold on a minute, let me talk to you. Oh, bloody hell, yeah, here. <laughs> Just gonna see what happens. We're unsure whether we can go down here. <laughs> I recognise some of the trees over there. Yeah, a lot of stuff looks familiar, doesn't it, down here?
stop somewhere here. Mm -hmm. Gonna be one of these trees. I don't know whether you, can, you should be able to turn around at the top. Cause like you say, it's a. So according to according to this, it's one of those trees there. <laughs> idea if I'm in the right place that's an oak tree um, sort of looks vaguely familiar but it doesn't look long enough to lie across I um, don't know whether these are the scenes where um, you comes down and they start filming it's difficult to tell there's so many oak trees I, I can't go into that next field because there's deer in there um, I'm wondering whether from this perspective, this could be the tree. I'm gonna hazard a guess that that is the tree. Just depends which angle you film from. So you could sit on there like that. I'm gonna try it. Excuse my voice, <laughs> it's virtually gone now. I'm just gonna walk around the whole of the tree. Uh, it's gotta be this one, I think. It's just really weird working out angles. Um, but I'm hazarding, I guess. Can't see where else it can be in this field. I would even guess that some of the scenes with the hawking whistle were done over there. Again, so difficult. I'll best get out of here though, I really shouldn't be in here naughty, but I couldn't resist it. It's like hallowed ground. <laughs> Weird. Yeah, if that isn't the tree, then it's a fail on my part, but I certainly would imagine it is. All right. Good girl. trees when the RAF flyover happens. I'll have to see if I can find 
you know what I mean? Where Sophie says, was that for me? Yeah. And them trees look yeah, like that. Yeah, because there's a load over there as well. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're obviously, and there, could be there. Mm -hmm. But like you say, is this the Jim will fix it badge part? There, there is one of these was a Jim will fix it. Because the Jim will fix it badge has got pilot, pylons on the side here. You just can't tell until you cross reference. So we'll have to watch the episodes. It's going to take a while to edit this all together. Well, like I say, there's no rush to get no, it. There's no, there's no rush, it? no, no. But I'm, I'm fairly convinced a lot of this is going to be scenes that they use. Yeah, yeah, I say you, you can, can see cross, that. Yeah, you can go off your map and we can edit them in. So they're bonus scenes because it's not like you can have your photo top where. Threw it down the back. In <laughs> gay abandon. It must have been flung with quite an abandon. Yeah. Yeah, we're now um, 30. Okay, so you need to turn back right. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to. Can you uh, see or do you want me to? I don't think there's going to be a lot coming down there. <laughs> Um, and again, this is the other direction of the slow car chase, or at least some of it. Yeah. I think some of it's going to be that yeah, way as well. Yeah, yeah, well, it's going to be in it. Mission successful, anyway. At least I got the tree. <laughs> together that oh, yeah. map thing you know um, well that was farmer bishop for a minute well that that was the entrance where i said to you it says go through here and you can't go through there yeah yeah um, okay sign on the left Old Ham. This is where the church is um, in series two, where they do all the um, filming and around the area. Although they don't film in the church, the church is quite prevalent in the program. The mayor's house should be down here somewhere as well. Okay, so there's the church. Again, for perspective, spinning round. And there's the mayor's house where Russ and Hugh go. I'll obviously go and take a video of that in a minute. But we're gonna go um, down the fields here. When you look on the location map, it just says certain spots they did stuff, but we're, we're gonna try and find where Lance finds his gold. Yeah, we think this is the entrance to the field where Lance finds his gold. Um, just going off the position of the church behind us. Gotta be, I think. It's obviously all changed though, you were talking five years ago already. And obviously, there's the church from there. Uh, it says private land here. I think this is the section where they filmed um, Peter's camper van parked. The TR7 parked, etc. I think that's where Peter finds the can when they're detecting. And there's the church through the gap. I said before, I think that's where Lance, um, Peter finds the can with Lance's detector. It looks very, very familiar. Uh, there you go. Lance's gold dance. We're just consulting Google Maps. Oh, it's, it's sort of over here somewhere. Somewhere over here. Mm. You hear about old Bob Cromer? Is it? See, you can, there's a picture of the two of them. Yeah. With with the um, church, in, church the in the background. Yeah, 
we think we're somewhere close to the Henbury Stone. Um, Bob Cromer comment. Probably just a fraction on this hill, but we're not sure. Well, there you go. Crazy for reference that uh, Google Maps tells you, you know, they're walking into town from here. And uh, it's probably 30 or 40 miles away from Framlingham. It's weird. Right, so we're now coming up to the mayor's house. Again, you've got no idea when you, until you come here, how out of perspective everything is. It's really strange. The magic of TV, um, as I say. The only thing to be fair is that that house could own that piece of land. Well, it does. It says it's the mayor's <laughs> land, doesn't it? That's what they say. Where they're, um, where they're digging. No, well, it says that, doesn't it? The mayor says it's my land. Yeah, well, and that's why, they go, that's why they come and get permission from the mayor. And Russ... I'm not. <laughs> I'm missing the fact that this is the part where um, I don't know which way they come in from, but Russ and Hugh, Hugh's a bit nervous of meeting the mayor, and Russ says, try to imagine him with his clothes on. And then the mayor answers the door up here with just a dressing gown on, I think. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting watching the series back once you've done the filming just to get a perspective so obviously this is the entrance to the mayor's house and then the door is there there we go i'll just do it from this way as well because i don't know which way they walk in Yeah. Where they were filming, walking in this direction. Yeah. Before they turned into the... All right, so you and Russell are walking where you are now. So they're filming from this way, which is why I've come this way as well. So, yeah, that's the mayor's house from that way. Right, so although this wasn't actually included in the filming, I thought it was too nice to miss. Just putting a section in from there. I'm gonna try and walk into the church. Just have a look at the, uh, the hill from the other side. Right, I'm stood right in front of the church now. Obviously you can't really recognize anything other than um, that's where we've just walked down there and behind that hedge line is where Lance did his gold dance. Yeah, just a quick shot of the church and a pan round. Think we're done all righty then so we're actually parked outside the uh the round church now and straight in front of me is the mayor's house that's about <laughs> it that we can wrap up now um there are a few little other locations but middle of fields yeah middle of fields really <laughs> it's quite difficult to get a perspective on some of the stuff um but we've been lucky that we were actually on a camping weekend and we were only in Polstead, which is quite close to where the church is. And so we're only five miles from our campsite now, even though by the end of the day, we'll have done a hundred miles just scooting around. It's amazing how far away from things they are. Television still amazes me that, you know, it's not all as it seems to be. So yeah, once again, apologies for the voice. Apologies if you're following the camper channel and this is really boring. And apologies if you're just here for the detectorists and I'm rambling. That's what I do. You'd get used to it if you followed the camper channel. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I've no idea when this will get released. And I don't know why I'm telling you that. Because when you watch this, it'll have already been released. See, I ramble. <laughs> Catch you later. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye. I think, I think that's there we go. I can remember that, that house over there. So. Oh, yes, the house is in the background. Right. Yeah. So we're just at the junction where we've come out of the church. Um, this main road, as you're going to see now, on the left, as soon as we pull out, is where Peter's camper van gets pulled over by the police. After Terry goes, you won't get far. I can see the house in front of me. I can't really do a lot of filming. Hopefully, I'm trying to wait for a gap in the road so we can sort of drive slowly. This might not work. Right. 
clear your way. I'm going to really slowly now. Don't leave it. Oh, I was going to say, if I dip it up. So here is where he pulls and pulls and pulls and pulls. Pulls and 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 pulls